Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery related to this planet that you see on the screen that might actually be not good news for planets orbiting around the so-called M-type stars. We'll talk about how this planet right here seems to have like absolutely no atmosphere whatsoever. Well, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So the object known as LHS 3844b, which is what you see right here on the screen, and this is something that's available in Space Engine for you to explore, is a planet or exoplanet we discovered uh, only a few months ago by using the really famous now TESS telescope. Basically by looking at this planet pass in front of its star, we saw that, well, there was something happening and this something was of course an exoplanet. And although it was a very exciting discovery at first, we soon realized that this planet orbits its star surprisingly close. A single orbit here takes about 11 hours, meaning that the surface of this object is probably really toasty. But this star that it orbits is the most common type of a star in the uh, galaxy, known as M-type dwarf, also known as a red dwarf. These red dwarfs are normally only, um, in terms of size, about the same size as Jupiter, as you can see, but in terms of mass, obviously a lot more massive. And one of the more exciting discoveries related to M-type stars was this right here, TRAPPIST-1, the system we discovered only a couple of years ago where there are seven Earth-sized planets orbiting around the system, and some of them also seem to be in the so-called habitable zone where we could potentially have liquid water. But this paper from Nature magazine that was released only a few days ago from when I'm making this video talks about a study, a very thorough study of one of such planets around a similar M-type dwarf and discovers a complete absence of any atmosphere. Now this study is brilliant in many different ways, but I wanted to start with the how. How did they actually find out all of this? Well, it's actually pretty clever. So luckily for us, when this planet orbits its star, we can quite easily and quite quickly see the changes in brightness around the star. Basically the dips and um, sudden increases in brightness. This is how we were able to see it to begin with. But Laura Kreidberg, the main researcher behind this paper, also created this beautiful animation that shows you exactly what they were able to see. So here, as the planet orbits every 11 hours, you'll notice that um, at some point, as it comes in front of us, suddenly the brightness here dips. That's when it passes in front of a star. Then, when it's on the other side of the star system, the brightness once again dips. But what's happening here? Well, what we're actually observing are the reflections of the starlight coming from the planet. So you'll notice that the orange part here increases the brightness, and then suddenly this brightness disappears as the planet goes behind the star. And here the brightness starts decreasing, then dips one more time and starts increasing again. So they were able to see all of this with quite a lot of accuracy by looking at this planet for 100 hours and observing about 10 or so passages of the planet around the star. So by looking at all of these points, they realized that it was quite uh, possible to use these differences here to try to see what kind of an atmosphere this planet might have by looking at the differences in temperature between the dark side of the planet and the bright side of the planet. And let's use this object here, TRAPPIST-1c, as a kind of an example. So because these objects are all tightly locked, and this is true for pretty much all of the planets orbiting around M-type dwarfs, uh, one side will always be super hot, the other side will be super cold. But depending on the atmosphere, like for example if there's a thick atmosphere, some of this temperature might get exchanged because obviously the atmosphere will move around the planet as well and will regulate all of the uh, conditions, making it more or less similar if the atmosphere is very thick or making it very different if the atmosphere is very thin. In our solar system, we have two perfect examples of this. One is Venus that has a very slow rotation, but despite one side always facing away from the sun for like basically months at a time, this side is still ridiculously hot. The entire surface of Venus is more or less the same in temperature because the atmosphere is thick enough to literally transfer heat across the entire planet. On the other hand, 
Mercury that basically has practically no atmosphere whatsoever, here one side, the one that's closest to the sun, will always be pretty toasty, pretty hot, whereas the dark side will be super cold, and this changes almost instantly because there's no atmosphere to maintain this heat and to transfer it across the planet. And so the darker side of Mercury is always significantly much colder than the bright side. As a matter of fact, um, some parts of Mercury never get any sunlight, specifically some of the craters in the um, polar regions. And so we've actually discovered uh, ice in a lot of these craters, even though sometimes on the bright side the temperatures are in hundreds of degrees. But since there's no atmosphere to uh, transfer this heat, it kind of never melts, it stays super cold in those darker craters. And so what exactly did the scientists discover when looking at this object here? Well, turns out that when they looked at the hotter side, the temperature here was close to about a thousand degrees Kelvin. Pretty hot, it's basically around 720 degrees Celsius or about 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. But on the dark side, they realized the temperature was as close to absolute zero as it gets. In other words, it was ridiculously cold as if no heat transfer happened whatsoever. Which of course means two things. One is that this planet is definitely tightly locked and one side is always facing to toward the star. But the second thing is that it has like zero atmosphere. There's not even a remotely thin atmosphere similar to Mars. And because this object is somewhat similar in size to Earth, it's about 30% larger than Earth, and in terms of mass, it's possibly a little bit more massive. Here it says it's about 1.7 masses of Earth. It's basically what's known as a super-Earth. And we're very excited to have these objects in a nearby galaxy, but um, around an M-type star, it's very likely that a lot of these objects will have no atmosphere whatsoever, which is actually kind of bad news. Now, we can't really uh, assume that this applies to all of the M-type stars, because first of all, this object is really, really close to its parent star. It's already very hot, and this is something we've predicted a long time ago. But at the same time, um, we still need to do more of these observations, and we need to look at other similar objects to discover if they also might not have any atmosphere. But because we now have this really brilliant technique that they use in this paper, it's going to be possible to analyze other similar objects as well. Now, as you can see in Space Engine, it does have an atmosphere, so it doesn't really look as it should look. The team behind Spitzer Telescope that was responsible for analyzing this planet released this image that gives you an idea of what this planet might really look like, as a kind of a scorched, darker object. And the reason it looks like this is because they also analyzed the composition on the surface which after they've analyzed, they realized that the planet probably looks a little bit more similar to a basaltic structure or basaltic surface, which is sort of like the color of um, volcanic rock, a lot less reflective and absorbing a lot of energy that comes from the star. So basically by being a lot less reflective, it's already hotter than it should be as well. In some sense, it actually does kind of resemble Mercury when you think about it, because Mercury is also very dark and very, very hot. And so I thought it would be a good idea to maybe try to change the planet right here in Space Engine to make it look a little bit more realistic. We can actually do this by using some of the features in Space Engine. You can press Shift F2, for example, to bring up these options where you can play around and change the planet almost entirely. And here we go. This looks a lot more realistic. No clouds, no atmosphere, tidally locked, super, super hot. Maybe not as dark as it should be in real life, but still pretty dark with very low reflectivity and also kind of mysterious and kind of beautiful. The temperatures on the surface on the bright side here will be roughly around 700 to 800 degrees Celsius, whereas the temperatures on the dark side or the night side will be about minus 270 degrees Celsius. The twilight side here is of course somewhere in between. Now, in one of the future studies, uh, the scientists behind this paper are planning to investigate cooler objects. In other words, objects that are not as hot as this one. The only reason they chose this object is because it was a lot easier to study this since it passes the star so quickly and because it's so close to their parent star. Using this technique, they can now try to investigate other um, very similar tidally locked objects, hopefully even objects in the TRAPPIST-1 system, and then we'll know for a fact if these objects can maintain the atmosphere. 
And by the way, the reason why there is no atmosphere is because in the first billion years of existence of these M-type uh, stars, they're so bright in the ultraviolet light and they're so powerful, way more powerful than our sun, that they literally strip any kind of atmospheric molecules from the surface and very likely also destroy any chances of, of having actual water on the surface. This is our belief so far. We don't really know if um, we're correct or not because we haven't seen enough of these to, to actually make this a fact. But we think that it's very likely that many of these objects don't really have atmospheres. Basically, in the first few billion years of the existence around these objects, they get stripped entirely of any atmospheric pressure. And this is, of course, also really bad news for us because the closest exoplanet to us in the habitable zone of its parent star is also orbiting an M-type star. The Proxima Centauri system with the Proxima B planet uh, that you'll see in a few seconds just so happens is also very similar both in size and in some sense in location, although a lot farther away. So once we are able to study this object, we'll hopefully be able to understand what's actually here. We don't really know what this looks like. We don't even know if this is a terrestrial planet or possibly some sort of a small gas planet. We just know that it's in the habitable zone and that it's somewhat similar um, in size to Earth. But we also believe that it is also tidally locked to the parent star that you see right there. But as you can see here, it's a lot farther away. So uh, discovering whether these objects can maintain an atmosphere is really important because if they can't, we shouldn't even go here. There's no point trying to investigate this planet because it's not going to be hospitable to human life. Unless, of course, we decide to live on the dark side, which for some people, I guess is okay. And anyway, until further studies, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the study in the description below and also subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.